in every program or application there will be some situations where you will have to do same task multiple times so to do that kind of task there are two things first is you can write the duplicate code but again there is a principle with name dry d r y and it says do not repeat yourself it means if you are writing same code multiple times then this is not a good code practice on the other hand there is one more way and this way is using iteration concept the iteration concept is basically used to do some task multiple times let's understand this concept with an example let's say i want to display the table of a number for example 2 3 5 any number it could be any number but i simply wants to display a table so how can i do that to display the table simply i have to write it like 2 multiply by 1 is equals to 2 and basically i have to write this concept 10 times like so here it would be 2 multiply by 2 is equals to 4 and so on so what we are doing over here we are repeating this console dot write line 10 times just to display the table of a number 2 now there is one better concept to handle this kind of situations and it is called as loop and this loop also has multiple types so first i am going to talk about the for loop this for loop is basically used to repeat some task for a given number of times for example if i want to repeat my name let's say 10 times then i have to do it like i have to use this for loop in this for loop i have to do three main things first is i need to tell an entry point and then i need to tell a condition and then i need to increase or decrease the value of that iteration so let's understand it like this so here i'm having this int i this is the entry point and its value is 0 you can put any value over here it does not matter then put a semicolon after the semicolon you have to write a condition this loop will work until this condition will be true so for example i want to run this program 10 times so here i'm writing i is less than 10 why i'm writing less than 10 not equal to 10 i can do that also so if i'm having one over here and here i'm writing less than equal to 10 then this will also work so basically i have started from 0 and then i am checking the condition less than 10 okay again put a semicolon and here you have to increase or decrease the value of this i it is not mandatory everything is optional over here but this is the general way of writing this for loop so here i am going to increase the value of this i by plus 1 and which we can use by using this i plus plus so what we have done over here we are having basically four main things first is this for loop second is this entry point so this is the starting point then we are having this condition and then we are having this i plus plus or i minus minus whatever increment or decrement you want to have you can do that over here okay let's just comment all these lines and here i'm writing my name console dot write line like this and here i'm writing my name now just run this application and see what will happen here you can see we are getting this name 10 times and remember you can put any valid number over here for example if i'm having 100 over here and try to run this program again then still you will notice that we are getting this name 100 times see if i scroll up or down you will see we are having so many names at this particular place this is very interesting concept now let's understand how this for loop works so this is the entry point first it will check what is the value of this int i then it will go to this second part it will check about this condition so the current value of i is 1 whether it is less than 100 yes the condition is less than 100 and it is true so it will come inside this body it will execute this particular line then it will go to this last part and here we have written i plus plus and this time this will update the value of i to 2 this part will get execute only one time which is the entry point there is no use of this program after entering inside this for loop now the main concept is only about these two things now the current value of i is 2 now it will check about this condition if the i is still less than 100 yes 2 is less than 100 which is true so it means the entire code that we have written inside the body that will get executed so again we will get one more value over here and if you are noticing one more important concept here we are increasing the value of i by 1 so it means here i can also utilize that concept and i can use or display the value of this i like this right now what will happen if i will run this program then you will see we will get the value of i as well along with this name let's run this application and here you can see that we are having all the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 
till 100 right it means inside this for loop you can utilize this i or you can also write your own custom logic now let's talk about that table so basically inside this for loop i want to display or execute this line 10 times okay so here i have to use first 10 and it is always a good practice to start the loop from zero although it is not fixed but you can start it from zero and you can use less than 10 like this why we always start the index from zero this is because in csr programming language or in any other programming language we have a concept of collection where we store multiple data under one single data type and in that case that index start from zero so it is always a good practice to start all the index from zero now in this case if you learn this program then you will see we will get the value of this i from zero and it will last up to 10 but again if you want to display something else then you can write plus one over here and you will get this similar output now let's say what is the output that i want over here so basically i want the number then multiply by the current index and then the actual value for that let's take one more variable over here and it is of type integer and let's say its value is 2 so here what i'm doing is i'll use that dollar symbol over here so this number multiply just focus on this concept so what we are having 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 10 and we can get that number from this i so here i can simply use i plus 1 and let's use equal to symbol and here i'm writing the actual multiplication so it is number multiply by i plus 1 or just for the simplicity you can also start it from 1 and go up to 10 and this time you don't have to use this plus 1 it will simply work see what i have done over here see i am having a number and i want to display the table of this particular number so what i'm doing i want to display the table up to 10 times so i have started a loop and this is int i is equals to 1 so this is my entry point then this is the condition and here is the increment and the decrement of this iteration what i'm doing console dot right line and here i'm just displaying the actual message and this is basically the formatting that i have done by using the string interpolation so this is the number i want to display it as it is number multiply the current index which is going to be one two three this time and then i will simply multiply them like this let's run this application and see what is the output here you can notice we are getting the actual table in a proper format 2 multiply by 1 is equals to 2 up to 10 times so basically this is a very common logic and by using only this one single line we are repeating it 10 times now you can make it also dynamic if i want to display the table of 5 then you can simply change the value over here in the number or you can also get it from the user see now we are getting the table of 5 over here there are few more very interesting concepts so basically whatever we have written inside these semicolons all of them are optional okay so let's assume that i do not want to write it like this i simply want to initialize this i before using this for loop let's assume that here i'm using this int i and i have not assigned any value i have just declared it over here so you do not have to declare it multiple time over here and it will work as it is right also if you have assigned the value as well over here then you can simply remove it from here but it must be blank over here right it is not like you can remove this semicolon also so these two semicolons are mandatory rest you can remove everything else from here if i will run this program this time then you will notice we are getting this same output okay now let's assume that instead of writing this i plus plus from this place i want to append this value over here because this body is something that will get execute every time the condition is true right so we can also increase the value at this particular place let's run this application and you can see still we are getting this same output now what will happen if i will just remove this thing from here now what i'm having over here i'm having the for loop without anything else and even this space is also not required i have just turned it just for the formatting let's run this application and see what is the output this time you can notice this loop is working in the infinite mode see it is working in the infinite mode because we have not written any condition and because of that this condition is always true so this is an infinite loop other than this you can also write multiple conditions over here 
for example if you want to work with two variables over here then you can also use two variables for example a b c or i j k why we always prefer this i over here because i stands for iteration and this is something that we are doing over here we are basically iterating this particular concept 10 times so we simply denote it by using this i or you can also use index if you want to use the proper form but in almost all the programming languages and almost all the programmers always prefer this i over here inside this loop now if you have some idea about the c programming and the important concept in the learning of c programming was displaying some star patterns right we can also do all those things over here as well how let's just comment this entire thing for a while and now i'm going to teach about the nested for loop let's just remove all these lines and there is a shortcut as well to create this for loop quickly in this visual studio you can simply type 4 and just hit the tab button twice see we are getting int i is equals to 0 and this is the length now let's put it 5 over here what i want i want to use the nested for loop okay so here i'm gonna use it one more time and this time i will use j and here let's say i'm writing this i first i will write the program and then i will tell you how it is working and here i'm gonna use console dot write not the right line and inside this right i'm gonna just simply display one star like this and over here i'm gonna use this console dot right line like this so this is a very simple program let's see what will be the output of this program see we are getting these stars one star two star three star and four stars and this time you can notice the value of j is also zero and the value of i is also zero so is j less than i no both of them are equal so this condition is not true so ultimately we will not get any kind of output at this place to crack this program we can make some more changes over here so there are two ways either you can start this loop from one and you can use equal to five or you can also use simply plus one at this particular place right let's just run this program this time and see what is the output this time you will notice we will have all proper five lines so this is one star two star three star four star and the five star now let's just debug it one more time the current value of i is zero this is true the condition is true now we are over here the current value of j is zero and remember we are initializing this j every time we will come inside the body of this outer for loop this is the inner for loop so in this inner for loop what i'm having i'm having j is equals to zero the value of j is zero which is less than i plus one it means zero plus one so it means zero is less than one yes this is true so it will come over here and it will simply display one single star okay now it will go back over here j plus plus and in this situation the control will go to the outer loop only when this inner loop will be completed right the value of j is one so what i'm having over here is is j less than 0 plus 1 the value of i is still 0 because we are in the inner loop so what i'm having is 1 less than 1 no this condition is false so we will come over here at this particular line now here we are adding only one single new line now let's talk about the second iteration this time the value of i is 1 initially it was 0 now it is 1 is 1 less than 5 yes it is true here again we are having this j from 0 because we are initializing it again right so j will start from 0 so is j less than i yes it is less than i so we are displaying one star again the value of j we are increasing it is 1 is 1 less than 1 plus 1 because the current value of i is 1 yes again condition is true so we are displaying it one more time and remember we are using right over here so it means this will not add a new line it will simply display the value only in the same line and this is the main logic to use the for loop and this is how we are simply displaying all these values over here now just for the simplicity let's write one more program and over here let's just remove all these things and i simply want to display the value of this i this time let's just comment this line also so I want to tell you that we can increase or decrease the value of i by any number so for example if i want to increase the value by 2 then i can write this condition like this let's run it you can see we are getting the value 0 2 4 we are getting the output in the same line because we are using this right over here if i'm using this right line method 
save the changes and run the program again then you will notice we will get the output in the separate line we are having this 0 2 and 4 you can use any increment or decrement at this place right that is all in this for loop condition i hope the concept is clear to learn it properly please practice this for loop multiple times because the for loop and the if else condition is something that is used most of the times in any program thank you for watching have a great day